We need to order our committee in the whole for Monday, December the 2nd. I have a, a, a agenda change for this evening. I'd like to uh, add A1 after the 753 water system and move the question period there to allow the people a chance to speak right after our conversation. And then we'll go into the visitor center information and then go to a question period for there. So a motion of the December 2nd, 2019 special committee to hold meeting be amended as presented. Moved. Moved. Second, all those in favor? Opposed? Carry. The very first item, of course, nice to see a large group here tonight, the 753 water system. As uh, several members of the public know, we, we uh, have a process to deal with tonight. Uh, I've had several calls and emails that the, the process is too slow. But it's not staff and it's not council. The process has to take the steps necessary for us to get to the point we are tonight. We represent all the community. We needed to know what kind of an asset we were going to be purchasing. And as a result of that, the water report was presented last week. We know we're looking at a potential cost of 1.8 to take over the system of 753. And tonight we are going to come to decisions on how we're going to borrow and how we go to the public and how we're going to pay for this and who's going to pay for it. And uh, we also have some uh, small housekeeping items for answers to some questions that were asked us at the last meeting, which I'll get out of the way first off, which was the reserve fund. Uh, Mr. Miller asked what the total of the current reserve fund is with 753, and it's 257,306 was in the reserve fund. Mr. Miller, I think, is here tonight. <clears throat> Thanks for that question. There are still outstanding receivables of 20,711. That's unpaid water bills from citizens of 753. It's down significantly from what it was when we started the process uh, to bring those down. So that was the two numbers that the uh, the electorate was wondering about from our last meeting. So at this time, I'd like to uh, open the floor and talk with council about the borrowing of the 1.8 million. All the different ways that we can do this and uh, their comments on this. Who wants to start us off? No one wants to talk money. <laughs> Councillor Erickson. Well, I got a question. The reserve funds are two hundred and fifty-seven thousand, and the current bank balance is thirty-three thousand. How does that work? I got that. I need that question. Well, the, the reserve the reserve funds are set aside. This is still are they invested. Oh, I don't know. That's not our money. It's, mm -hmm. it's what they're doing. With. So, so then the reserve funds plus the bank balance should be two hundred eighty some thousand, two hundred ninety thousand. Yes. Is that, is that right? Yeah, I would, I would say yes. Okay, so who's holding this 257000 Uh, Court. 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 No. No. The water controller is holding it on behalf of 753, who they're operating currently. Mr. Mm -hmm. yes, Mayor. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions on the, uh, on that? I can go another question. Oh, go ahead. So there's 1.8 million as we talked about last week. Um, I think, personally, I think it's way over, the number is way too large, and then there was a contingency plan of, what, 30 to 50 percent on top of that? I think, you know, to get something that's real, we would have to get some actual real numbers of somebody doing the contract work like maybe some local guy come and say, well, to put a water hydrant in, it's not going to be 15,000, it's going to be 6,500. You know, because I think those numbers are just way skewed too, skewed too high, and I feel sorry for 753 water, water people if they have to bump up $1.8 million over the next years. Well, the contingency plan was, or the contingency amount put in there was high. It was around 50% in some areas. Yes, yeah. yeah. So. That's 50% on top yeah. of 1.8. That's why we're having this conversation. No, no. Any 
other comments on the potential loan of the 1.8? Just a comment. Um, the 1.8 number is included the contingency. It did. Yes. It did. Yes. So it's not yes. plus 50%. It was included in the 1.8. On the, on the bottom of it, it said 50% contingency. And that when number you have, plus the... And when you add up all the numbers that they did, the 1.8 was included. It was included in the one point eight, but we still felt the contingency fund was a little high. Yeah, yeah. But it's not what you're Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to speak to the the report by True and the one point eight million dollars. If we're talking about what would benefit seven five three, we're not talking about the one point eight figure. Uh, as Mr. Underwood uh, alluded to, uh, the booster station valued at 850000 um, Only one-third of that booster station would benefit 753. The other two-thirds, the existing District of Coke utility. So when you're talking about uh, 753 and, and what's estimated in the report, it should be $1.235 million. $1.235 that's benefiting so yeah. And that's where that two thirds scenario came from. Um, that, that one's a little bit under. It's 1.205, but it does give you an order of magnitude, Mr. Mayor. Right. Mayor. Thanks. So just to, to clarify that, so that number that 1.235 million, that's coming from the closure of the two 753 system wells. Um, the upgrades to the reservoir, the 753 reservoir, and a third of the cost of the booster pump station on 75. Is that all that's in there? Uh, so there would be one third of the 850,000 for the booster, which comes to 285,000. $30,000 for the two well closures, $680,000 for reservoir improvements, $240,000 for other miscellaneous tie ins of water main sam sampling stations. Uh, additional valving and hydrants. So a portion of the 240000 would also benefit the regular 138-meter system, right? That's all I see it anyways. I, mean, I don't know if that's a question or a no. statement, but well, they showed us the water modeling with 753 on the system and not, and with the tie-ins, it improved, like tie-ins helped improve as well as the booster station, right? Well, the, yeah, the tie-ins will improve your fire flow, but it's, it's hard to sort of put a number on that. Yeah, but there is some benefit. There. There's some benefit. Okay, that's good. Any other questions on that for staff? <clears throat> but, but it included in that, is that 50% contingency fee of 282000 on that booster pump? So it may not be that high, but they put that 282000 in the contingency. Yeah. I, mean, I would really like to see real numbers because I, I can't see us going and borrowing so much money or attempting to borrow money and it's going to be half we don't need. Sounds good. I mean, this sounds more like the bridge project. I'm just wondering if um, the reserve funding can be applied to the, this repair. Mr. Mayor, the two reserve funds, if we amalgamate, the one that we have for the district utility can be used once they're merged, and the one, any reserve funds are, that come forward from 753, once acquired, can be used to offset those costs. Councillor Smith? <clears throat> just, yeah, just a comment on that. I don't know if that's something that we would want to do. We've been trying to build our reserves, not take away from our reserves because we're still going to have an issue down, we're no doubt we're going to have an issue down the road with, within the district somewhere, so if we deplete our, deplete our reserves, that's not something that we want to do. Um, the only other thing, as Councillor uh, Erickson said, real numbers, I guess what we're looking at is to borrow up to this amount of money of 1.235, and then <clears throat> once we go for tender, then that, that's when we're going to basically see our real numbers. That'll be the high point of it, we go over tender then if we borrow that much money, are we coming, like if it comes in at, say the whole project comes in at 900,000, <coughs> there's 300,000 there that we don't have to borrow against, I'm assuming that. 
It's a tough one. I don't want to spend any more money on <coughs> more reports or anything like that to try and get close to real numbers either because it's just we're throwing money away at it. We threw we put eighteen thousand dollars into this one to just look at this look at the system again that we've already had the system looked at and every time we get somebody to look at the system it changes the direction changes of what the system needs. So if we get more more people to look at it, I just think it's wasting our money on that part of it. Um, I think yeah, that's I don't know which way I want to go on this. Yeah, Mr. Fertilowski. Uh, from a process point of view, you have to prepare a borrowing bylaw, and that bylaw has to state a number. In this case, it could be the 1.8 or whatever you as council determine. That number is fixed. So to determine what the actual cost will be, you'll finally go up to tender on these works. If that number is under, which is, is predicted conservatively, then there's a surplus. That surplus is, is not reduced from the borrowing. It can be applied to the project or used uh, more than likely in future as a reserve or to asset manage that utility. If we hearken back to the bridge project, we had a surplus in there and that allowed us to expand the scope of that board amount and we built the uh, Copper Creek or Suckers Creek bridge as a part of that. Councillor Smith. So on the, on the reserve tank up top, we don't have an actual figure because they haven't found out why the level is not there. So you know, we, the cost can vary on that, so we want to make sure we're covered. We have a, we have a number that's fixed by, you know, a consultant now to go forward to get a, you know, to, to manage the finances and then go back from there, but we don't know what that figure is going to be out there. We, we haven't figured out the problem, and it's not that we haven't looked at it. So. We, we've been working on this, this, this thing's been going out there for 30 years. We need to fix it and put it to bed. I think everybody's kind of tired of it. It's fall back and forth so many times, and uh, it just needs to be done and fixed in the proper way. So, Councillor Yeah, I just think about Councillor Smith, Dusty Smith's point about <coughs> reserve funds, wanting to build them up and whatnot. But I mean, we obviously build up the funds in order to be able to use them when the time comes. And I think this is perhaps one of those times where the time has come that we should be using some of what we have in reserves for this system. Um, at our last meeting when we made, well not the last meeting, but the meeting previous where we made a decision that we wanted to take over the 753 system, I think it was the feeling of council at that time that we decided that it's a one community and that the cost should be spread amongst the community. Um, so therefore I think we're reserves that may come with this utility, the 257000 as well as some funds that we have now, of course, it'd be good to get some input from our director of finance and director of operations as far as what we think we need to keep in reserves and what we can afford to spend on this project. Um, and that would, I think, uh, uh, overall reduce the cost of what we might need to borrow. Um, in the report, it also, uh, Mr. Fordlowski's report, it said that there might be opportunity for grant funding. Have any of those grants been researched to see? Um, and also is gas tax funding something that we can apply to uh, to this project, the you know, water project? Mr. Mayor, there would be infrastructure grants uh, available, um, and the province currently looks very favorable when you take on a private water system. Gas tax uh, criteria has widened, so potentially, yes, uh, we could. Uh, again, though, if, if council authorizes and directs staff to uh, prepare for, for uh, borrowing, then it is a set amount. Uh, and exactly as Councillor Medlock says, um, asset management best practice does caution that you shouldn't uh, exhaust reserves per se, but think of uh, resourcing it forward. I have provided you a worst case scenario, so to speak, if 1.8 is, uh, is borrowed. And that's amortized over 25 years and split amongst, as Councillor Medlock was just stating, uh, the 753 customer base estimated at 200 and the district of both customer base and it would amount to an annual charge in addition to the annual water charge of $49.93. A year. For 25 years. Sorry? Yes, 25 years. Yeah. Yeah, Ferris. So, with the reserves, I understand that Silver Creek needs a big upgrade. And if we start running the reserves down on this, then we set a creek, which we need to do something drastically in Silver Creek. 
you know, with their, top, with their water tower and uh, distributing water to the Silver Creek residents. I think we shouldn't compromise Silver Creek for this. We should take this thing all as a whole if we're going to do this. The Silver Creek, we put the reserves away to start looking for the Silver Creek water development. So if we borrow, we have to make sure that it's, it's borrowed for the specific project. We don't take the reserves away from where we have uh, our projects are needed right currently. Yes, Councilor Mallon. I have a question about the borrowing. Um, I'll just use the number. I don't think it's the right number, but if, if I just said we went up and were to uh, ask for approval to borrow the $1.8 million, and then I guess the point of tendering, and it comes in at a million dollars, a million two, something lower, let's just say. Um, are we required to still borrow the 1.8, or can we only borrow what we require to do the project? Because it, it seems silly to have to borrow 1.8 and only get 1.2 because we have the interest on a higher amount that's not necessarily needed. It's my understanding, again, as for the bridge, that uh, when MFA goes out to the financial markets, they have to have one set figure because they need to plan and they need to potentially borrow from those other markets and then they calculate all the interest over the life of that loan. Otherwise, similar to the bridge, we could have reduced the scope and uh, paid back that loan earlier, or at least reduced it by the amount that was unused. So council should plan that whatever amount is borrowed is going to be borrowed and it's going to be amortized over 25 years. It could be available for use in reserves for an expansion of scope, but once the money is borrowed, that's borrowed from MFA. Okay. So. <clears throat> So, so that poses another question. Um, of the $1.8 million, is it all necessary to do immediately, or is it something that can be phased, where I don't know what part of it is necessary right away. I imagine the reservoir would be a priority. Is the booster station a priority, or is the clients a priority? Can some of that maybe be turned into a change of scope down the line, or is it something that all has to happen at about the same time? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, um, some of the tie-in work uh, would need to happen right away. The reservoir is a priority, and the booster station is a priority because currently we don't have a redundant supply for that area. Um, What's the bulk of the money there? Yeah, so <coughs> those are both priority projects, and that's the majority. All right. And our current well system will handle handle everything for 753. Our current well system that we're using right now will uh, without worrying you, about the wells of the 753. Through you, Mr. Mayor, with the installation of the booster station, yes. The booster station will allow um, the wells that are uh, currently servicing town, which is the 87 zone, mm -hmm. to boost up to the 138 zone and supply that reservoir, should that be required. Currently, right now, we only have one active well that's supplying the 138 reservoir. <clears throat> so if that well goes down, I mean, we did, um, for some risk management, buy uh, a spare pump and motor. Uh, but ideally, you don't want any uh, disruption whatsoever. And uh, so if required, once that booster station is installed, um, the three wells, well, one, two, and three, can then supply that system through the booster. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so um, maybe we change that slightly topic as well to how the funds should be distributed. Um, like I say, in our initial meeting where we talked about taking over the system, I, I, again, I feel like it was the, the feeling of council. Um, although it wasn't put into a motion, but I feel like the support was there to spread the cost over the cost for over the entire town because we are one community and I don't think we would do something uh, like a local service area when Silver Creek needs a reservoir. We would also want to look at that as one complete water system. So I still feel that way, but I haven't kind of played around with the idea. Uh, I guess I'll say that first off, I'm not in favor of, of borrowing the money and simply spreading that cost over 
just the 753 users at a cost of $500 a year for 25 years. I don't, I don't think that's a good way to go, especially since there is some additional benefits to the District of Hope. You just mentioned another one, I forgot about the redundancy of that 138 is down. Currently, we have no backup plan, so the booster station uh, is a good, good option. Um, so one of the proposed options he had here, um, costing the borrowing of 1.2 million spread over the cost of 753, that, that is for just the benefit of the 753 users, but what about the rest of the money that would be needed to complete the $1.8 million project? Where would that money come from in that scenario? Yeah, no, absolutely. Like as, as th it would come from the water utility reserves. And not, this not area is provided for your information. And just so you know, the water fund reserve is currently at $837,395.45. Okay, so I was trying to use the, um, if I could again. Um, I know the numbers are right, totally right in my, in my mind here, but a train of thought that I had anyhow was uh, at our last meeting when we had the costing report to us from True. He made mention that um, between the 753 water system and the 138 water system, uh, it was roughly a third, two-thirds type of user, right? So I was looking at the option of, of uh, splitting that cost, 1.8 million with one-third, two-thirds, and seeing what that would look like. Um, thinking that the 753 customers, and this is the touchy part of it, uh, for years they had a benefit of not paying the same <coughs> water rates as the rest of the town, putting into the district's entire water system, and building up those reserves and maintenance and all of that. So I was thinking maybe that there could be an additional charge to the 753 customers, but the rest of it over the course of the whole town. Um, like I said, I was just toying with the numbers and I asked the question for, for staff to get back to me so I don't know if council's had a chance to look at that email because it just got late today. But just for discussion purposes anyways, um, if we were to take uh, which scenario over here? One third, two thirds. Still one point two million. Yeah, one one <coughs> still boring one point eight million because I threw that up as the big number. Um, if a third of that 600,000 was spread out over the 753 customers and the 1.2 million spread out over the remainder. Um, the 600,000 over the 753 customers would be $168 a year for 25 years. It would be $33.29 for the remainder over the rest of the district. That's quite a difference. Um, we don't have the information as to how the water rates looked over the course of time. So I don't know if that's a fair discussion, but I thought I would bring it forward so everybody here can talk about it and eliminate it or discuss it or whatever. But I'm just throwing that out there for discussion. Yeah, I so just out of curiosity, you know, the 753 customers, as was reported in a report, are currently paying 800 and something dollars a year. Today. Yeah. yeah, today, which is, I would say, quite a bit higher than what the other residents are paying. 600 a year more. Yeah. So um, I, I don't think that's the direction I would be looking as the one third, two third. Um, I've just been, you know, lately I've been trying to put my, trying to think of the best emotion, but kind of put myself in their shoes. And I've been dealing with phone calls and emails from people in the 753 system. You know what they're dealing with right now, especially this time of year. You know, people, you know, getting that letter in the mail with the, what I thought is a pretty absurd amount of money to dig up and locate a valve. And I've done it personally in charge of $150 to $200 per property to do it. And the frustrations they're dealing with in that. And reading the three options that I got presented to me, I think I agree with Councilor Menlock in the second one, the only one I could think to, is that spread the borrow. I, I do agree that $1.8 million is way blown out of proportion, but 
I think once we decide on the proper amount to borrow, I think it has to be spread out amongst all the ratepayers in the district. I know a lot of people aren't going to be happy because a lot of people can't afford the current costs associated right now, but I still can't see putting a burden of $500 a year on what, what they've gone through in the past, you know, 10 years or wherever or how long they've been. <coughs> Excuse me, you've been a part of that system. Yeah, I, I still go that that direction myself, and then I think another benefit of taking over the system is that adds another 200 users a year paying district utility rates to help build up the entire district of Hope's assets. So that's that's a huge plus as well. You know, it's a lot of extra. I hope it's enough extra money that would support that system. You're shaking your head. No. You think there needs to be another water rate increase in general just to cover the overall system? Or do you well, there is a number of uh, upgrades identified in the water master plan right. that are going to have to be tackled as well. <clears throat> and our reserve at 800 and some odd thousand is, is far less than what we actually need to sustainably fund the asset management of the water utility. Um, I did a quick calculation on the 753 system and moving forward to a 40 year life expectancy of the infrastructure from today. Um, you know, you're, fully fund the asset replacement, which no municipality can really afford to do, but that would be between three hundred fifty and four hundred thousand dollars a year. Just to fund it to be able to replace the assets in four years. So we're so. we're clearly behind on the rest of the district's water system as well. So it is still a benefit to have another two hundred users paying into that system. It is, but when you weigh the cost of actually taking ownership of that infrastructure, um, what you're generating and and revenue from water fees is not mm. is not covered in that. Seven by three water systems are a fair bit newer than most of the time. It is newer, <laughs> and that's why I applied it for a year. So you're getting a lower life expectancy than the rest of the district's water system then? Well, yeah, because yeah. we have a significant portion of our water system that's actually in deficit. Yeah. Sure. All right, any other questions in that area? I think what I'd like to do is, uh, at this time, to, to move it to the next step, is entertain a motion from the floor that uh, we divide amongst the whole community the cost of taking over the 753 water system. And then the next step after that would be deciding on the amount we need to borrow to get this done. So I set it up. So I have a motion from the floor on my first item there. I'll make the motion that we divide the cost of borrowing to take over the 753 system across the entire district of Oak. Users 753 and the district of Oak. All right. Do I have a seconder for that? Okay. <coughs> Opposed? Carry. All right. So there's your first direction, staff. Uh, we're moving forward with the, the entire town participating. <coughs> Excuse me. The next thing is, do you need, do you need more discussion on the, the amount of borrowing? Mm -hmm. Is that what you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <coughs> Councilor Eric, you have a thought at the moment? <coughs> Councilor Neville. So, along the same line, I was already speaking to the um, borrowing 1.8 million. And I don't know if it's wishful thinking, but I'm just thinking about the bridge where the initial estimates came out at 10 million, right? And the overall cost was down closer to four, four, three, and dead, right? But we borrowed, right? So then we borrowed what we had to borrow because of the big number, which yes, it did allow us to change the scope, but it, there's no certain guarantees in that you're going to be allowed to change the scope of this particular project. Like, let's wishful thinking, it comes in at a significantly lower cost. And we're left with some you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars that we sounds like we're going to need. Um, I imagine it would have to be in close proximity to the original project in order to use those funds. I don't think they'd let you spend the extra reserve funds or extra mooring funds in Silver Creek, for example. I think that was part of the issue with the bridge, a couple of the road bridges that we were allowed to expand that school because it was located quite close. Um, so maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's okay to have some excess funds if that works out that way, because it sounds like there's works needed. Um, but I don't know if Councillor Erickson said this at the meeting or not, but another thing is that when you go out there, when you put out 
that you borrowed one point eight million dollars and that's your budget to go up for tender. I think you're probably going to get some quotes that come in pretty close to what your budget is. Um, I just don't know what the process is if we decide to borrow less and go up to tender. Are we allowed to then try to borrow again to make up a shortfall if there is one? Or would we then be relying on reserves only? Yeah. So we if you look at board 1.6 and then rely on the reserves if needed, or one, something. Yeah. <laughs> Councillors. So, if the contingency fund, I just took the contingency funds that they put in here, that comes to around six hundred thousand dollars. That's at say thirty some or thirty some or fifty, or most of them are fifty. So fifty percent contingency funds. So if you take six hundred thousand dollars off of off of 1.8, you got you got 1.2. Now, if you say, well, 10% or 15%, 12% of contingency funds, which usually is what it is, no more than 20, add that back in, and then add that back in. We probably could borrow 1.2 or 1.25, and I'm sure we'd probably come closer to what the budget would be. We still have potentially reserves to uh, Well, they have two hundred say $300,000 in their reserve yeah, right now. That's what I mean, their reserves. So they have that in the reserve right now that we would be able to use against us. So if we were to borrow even a million dollars, and then we have their six, roughly, it's roughly 300,000, which is it's, it's 280 something, 287, I think, with the money in the bank. So if we could use that, we'd come almost right up to where the cost actually would be, I would think. That's a yeah, I just think we need some more hard numbers too, exactly what it is, and you know, because it's a very big project for us in the, out there. And we want to make sure we do it right, but we also want to make sure that we're being financially responsible here. So it would be nice if we had a little more concrete numbers. And I know the tank is one of the issues in that, but some of the other stuff, if we could get some better numbers out there, I think it'd be easier for us to make a decision. Mm -hmm. uh, it certainly would be, but the problem in any of these types of projects that large capital projects is that just looking at the history is, is how do you get those numbers? <coughs> I mean, no contractor in his right mind is going to go out there and do all the work that it takes to get you hard numbers and, and sign that he will guarantee that that's what the bid will come in at. When there's no guarantee that he's even going to get the work because he hasn't gone up for tender on it. Yeah. They'd be foolish to, for a contractor to do that. I mean, you can get some quotes, but nothing's firm until it's firm. So. Unfortunately, the process we have is to work our way through the estimate system, and, like this is a class B estimate, right? So to, the next step to further refine that is pretty much to go out for tender. You can probably get a cost consultant, but that's uh, more money spent, yeah. and I don't think that's a good way to go no, either. I'm opposed to that so much. Uh, yeah. I agree. Uh, better numbers make better decisions, or more information yeah. makes for better decisions, but we can't get to that more information until we make a decision at this point. That's the challenge in these capital projects, but and it'll keep pushing back the changeover as well. Yeah. I, I think we need to have a look at the numbers that we've, that we've been given, right. and uh, see if we can trim it back. And uh, Councilor Erickson, brought up you. what was your final number there, Bobby? When you, when you uh, well, I'm just going by it's around six hundred thousand for contingency. Contingency is subtract that off the one point eight. There's one point. Two, two. You add, add back about and then 15. maybe ten or fifteen percent maximum. But then we have almost three hundred thousand in the reserve fund that we could use once that's once we take it over. So there's it's just just for round numbers three hundred thousand plus nine hundred thousand left to borrow, and maybe then add fifteen percent on top of that. Fifteen times nine what's that? Fifteen times ten. About one hundred fifty thousand on top of that roughly. So you're. You're, you're down to around a million dollars. I don't think that would be enough to, uh, that's not a big enough ask to uh, do what we need to do. I think 1.2 million. Right, and use the other reserve. And then use the 300,000 that they got in there. I don't know, we're just guessing. Council yeah. Medlock. Thanks. So, so my question is about uh, grants again. If we do uh, borrow and then find a grant after the fact, um, are we still stuck with that amount that we borrowed, or are we doing this backwards? Should we be seeing what grants are available first and then seeing if we need to borrow less? If, if there's a 30 cent dollar grant available from the province and the feds again, 
for a project like this in our portion would be a third of the, the overall cost, and then borrowing would be a lot different than there. Mr. Mayor, um, two things on that. First thing is no grant is guaranteed as we've come to find out. So you may be dragging this uh, process out further and um, making more people unhappy. Just a bit of an opinion. The second thing is once you borrow, uh, again, it's going to be amortized and you have to pay it back as per the schedule with, with MFA. And the reason is that that's very, they buy us inexpensive money. It's just the way it, it works. So what could happen is we get a grant. That grant then can be can offset the cost to each utility rate pair potentially as a rebate, for example, to offset the yearly cost. Will the grant allow for that though? Um, well, and we can we can confirm that. I believe there's flexibility now because it applies to the to the utility. Um, and and uh, it may allow for if you don't want to give the entire rebate back for some asset uh, management seed money back into reserve. Uh, However, not having council direction yet, uh, it's difficult for me to, uh, to ascertain that, but certainly we can go once and, and figure things out that way. Again, I believe the earlier comment was that they're not likely to change scope, and I, I believe Councillor Medlock made that. I think if it refers to the utility as a whole and it's within that scope, I believe MFA will be fairly flexible, as they were in the bridge project. That's the information I have, is that they are somewhat flexible. But you can't take it and just spend it on general issues. Again, it's got to stay within the utility. 753, once amalgamated, will be part of one utility. Mm -hmm. This is my next question, too. Should we, this amalgamation of it, should it, like I know this, the numbers are coming out, I think the general consensus is we're going to borrow some money, how we're doing that. So should we not get this the process going that we're taking this over? So we start collecting from the users as of now. So in the meantime, we're at least we're collecting. They're not getting hammered on for more Corex, water control, or anybody like that. And the district's at least taking in that that money as as of right now until we get to the decision of when we're borrowing it to do the upgrades to that system. Probably Mr. Forlowski and that. I don't think we can do that. But. Mr. Mayor, you can't for a couple of reasons. Um, the first one being the transfer agreement has to be endorsed by the water controller. And in this case, it'll be subject to the successful uh, um, assent to the borrowing bylaw. If you want to do this, uh, like the bridge, we'll have to create a borrowing bylaw, which will have to go out for assent. And this can be done in three ways. A petition uh, signed by at least 50% of the owners of the properties, representing 50% of the assessed value. Uh, council initiative, so an initiative of the municipal council. Uh, pro providing no more than the following petition against the proposed local service area, or in this case, the entire area, uh, within 30 days of public notice of the initiative, uh, less than 50% of the owners of property, or an assent vote, commonly known as a referendum. So you just put it up to everybody. Do you wish to borrow? That's the most common form. Utilized and easy. So I have a question. So if we borrow too much money, like we did on the bridge, could we put it into the Silver Peak water system? Since it's all one water system now, to improve improve that? Uh, I believe it's possible. It's all one utility then. Yes. That's what I want. So um, I'm leaning more towards that 1.2, 1.3 million dollar sort of borrowing figure myself. <clears throat> and I think that that the way to do it would be the alternate approval process. The, the 50%. Uh, well, what I have from the province's website here says that how that works is that 10% or more of the eligible electors, so that would be the entire district of home, um, can submit responses in opposition to the borrowing bylaw. Mm -hmm. And if that takes place, then we have two options. Um, one would be to go to an assent vote, like a referendum within 80 days or the other is to put the matter on hold and consider alternatives to the proposed action. It's the same process that we tried with the bridge and it did fail and we had to go to referendum. But I feel like the support from the community on this water system would be there. Um, either way, you're asking the, the electorate, so you, you find out one way or the other, but instead of spending roughly $20,000 to hold a referendum, you do the alternate approval process and if that fails, 
then you can go to reference <coughs> and you have to go with that cost anyways. The only downside is it delays the process a little bit. But in my opinion, I think that it would, would, would pass. I don't think that there would be 10% of the community in opposition to the Oregon bylaw, especially understanding that a large portion of this project benefits the entire district of Hope. Mr. Mayor, that is a political decision. It is. It is. So that's my feeling. I think borrowing 1.2 million uh, and using the alternate approval process is a good route to take. Can I make a motion? I think we should separate that. Okay. I think we should separate that. Let's talk about the amount. Let's finalize the amount and then uh, how we're going to go to the public yeah, on that. Sure. So we can make a motion and table it on that. So we have a motion on the floor, unless you want to change your motion or withdraw it, otherwise I'll call the question and see what happens. So we're going to vote, we're going to vote on the 1.2? That's the motion that's on the floor. <coughs> well, after what Councillor Erickson had just said to previously, you just comment on it. Um, with the 1.8, as we got from the water study earlier this year too, now that we've gotten from staff as well, that. That money, if, if we're co we come considerably under budget, put that into the reserves to go towards our next project within the utility. I think maybe we should borrow it because, especially if we're spreading it, I think if we were going down to the 1.2 and we were only segregating over that service area, special service area for 753, I can understand that. But if we're going, if we go, if we're going for the whole district, we should go for the whole amount, and extras will go into another project within the community as well. I'm sorry, who was first? Councilor Meadow. Okay, so I had the same trepidation, I guess, with the report 1.8 million versus a lower number. The PCC project is a good example of one that was over on the number. In fact, you didn't have enough, right? Um, so my question, this is a committee the whole meeting, so the decisions here are not final. They have to go to a regular meeting to be ratified. So, what would help me make a better decision would be to know if we borrowed $1.8 million and it came under budget, could those funds be used anywhere in the water system or 
Is it specific in direct relation to this particular <coughs> project? Because that makes a big difference to me. Um, it is inexpensive borrowing from the MFA. It's a the rate of return and the debentures and all that stuff help out, right? So it wouldn't be a bad thing to borrow the 1.8 million, have this project come under budget in the perfect world, and have some funds available because we do know we have some other large projects coming down the pipe, and those movies would help with that. Um, so I I would want that information prior to ratifying tonight's decision at a future council meeting, which would assume in the next <coughs> next week, right? Next Monday on the ninth. Right. Yes. So is that information that you think you'd be able to get in time for that with a, a definite answer, not a I think so kind of answer, you know what I mean? Um, that's important. Mr. Mayor, I believe I could get a written response from MFA on your concerns uh, before next week so that at the meeting you can take a decision or ratify a decision you're going to take tonight. Okay. Councilor Erickson. So, if you read carefully the second option that we just voted on, it says this option would likely prove to be a dissatisfied for many current customers who <coughs> are not 75 feet water works customers and have by a management of district water system increased revenue over time to manage the up and upgrade the system as required. Financial this op option would require the district to undertake all works to upgrade the asset management the system while suffering the risk that it will be unable to obtain grant funding to offset these costs. These are currently estimated at upwards of 2.36 million. We just voted on that. So to take this all into consideration, that we just voted on. Number two, it could cost the district up to 2.36 million. Because I, I don't follow you on that at all. But well, it says like by the time they do this, it has to be worked into our system, the current water system that we have, 138, and uh, and it says it's going to be, these are currently estimated at upwards of 2.36 million to work it into the system. Can you speak to that, Mr. Dickens? Yes. Which are you reading the Opus report? No, no, two. no John's, John's, report. Report. John's report number two. It says second. Well, we paragraph starts with second council could decide to solve the order. This is the July report. That's a report based on the. Uh, the uh, that was before the true report came in. Yes. That's right. Yeah. That's, That's based on the Opus report of 2017. Right. Well, we just voted on that. No, 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 no. This is just in the package for information. Well, this is a report from July. Yes, I understand that, but it says we voted on the second one. We just did. We just voted on the second one. It's going to impact pay all taxpayers in the area, which we just voted on. And it says if it does that, then it will be up to that. But I remember this is the board stating that they were going to replace the Yes, I understand. What I'm worried about now is that number. If that number is of no value, it's in our report that we just voted on. No. Well, it's not the same report. That was the second option. That's the second option. No, the second option. What does it say? That was the this second option in the report in July before we decided to take over. This is a history center. Right. We have ordered that the district of Hope will take over the system with all the deficiencies. That's what we just voted. And all the taxpayers are going to assume this. I just don't want to be saying, oh man, we did have it in the report, 2.36. Okay. Mr. Mayor, uh, those numbers clearly as a result of your decision to engage true in this latest uh, study were refined, and then we were refined down to 1.8. Okay. On that yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I consider the 1.8 million, if we are looking at doing, we could possibly do something for Silver Creek, because we're going to spread the cost over the neighborhood you know, the whole town, then we should at least try and share the cost of our master water plan. And if that is possible to do that, then I, anyway, I'd like to withdraw the 1.2 million motion. Can you, do that? you can. Do that? You can. You can. Yeah, defeat yeah, it. We'll defeat it. That's we'll defeat it. So I'll we call it. Well, I'm going to. Well, we, we have a second. Can you change it now before. Uh, well, you didn't that. call the question. No, I'm going to do that mm -hmm. now. That's what I'm going to do now, and then he can have a new motion, correct? Yeah. Well, okay. Or change it before the voting. Mm -hmm. There you go. Amend, amend, amend your motion. Yeah, I would like to amend the motion to 1.8, 
if the money can be spent on other Washington water projects within the district, part of our master plan that we've come to, and that's so that it goes all towards the goodness of the community. Has everybody been waiting long enough for this water upgrade? And if we can possibly do this, I think we're moving in the right direction. So I need a second, second, second. And this will come forth on Monday, the ninth meeting. And at that point, you can change the this after you get the additional information. Thank you. I just want to be for the clarity. I want to make sure that like I'm okay with that number, but it's based on the assumption right now that. The funds could be used elsewhere. Um, yeah. So, if that's not the case at the next meeting, I will be moving against this motion at that time and proposing a new motion with a new number. So, just for clarity. Okay, we're all okay. We're all, yep, we're all clear on that. Yeah. So, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Those carry. So, that's the second step. Uh, done, staff. Uh, the next one would be how how we're going to go out to the public. Is that right, Ms. Bellingham? We should. The next step would be to how we're going to go out to the public with the bylaw. What that looks like. And we have the three options. And Councillor Bedlock, uh, you want to speak to that option if you're in favor of this time? Yeah, just the alternate approval process. I think is the process that we should undertake at least first, if not only uh, if it's successful. So basically how that works is we form the bylaw and then we have to put it out, give a notice to the entire district to hope that this bylaw is out there and that um, it applies to the entire service area. And I think you have to include all the, the numbers in there too, with the additional cost will be. Um, and then there's a timeline, I'm trying to see what that timeline is, but I, I, I think it's a short, shorter timeline, like 30 days 30 or so. Days. Um, that the electors have to 10% of them would have to come forward, so roughly 620 people, um, to say that they are in opposition to the borrowing bylaw for, for whatever reason. At that point, we have 80 days to hold a referendum, or we can put it on hold and consider other options. Uh, but either way, I think that that's a good first step because it saves us the cost of having a referendum if it's not required. I think that that's the, the right way to go. Anyone else want to speak to the approval process? How will we communicate this? Well, from what I've seen in the work prior to <coughs> you would want to hold some public information sessions so that council or the public has a full understanding of the scope of what's being borrowed and what it's used for and what it's being allocated for. And then we just go through the process on that. Newspaper. And it's starting the readings, and we have to advertise it. So, but I think I would highly encourage some public information session. Okay. I'm sorry, Mayor. I think it'll be useful, and, and I'll work on the staff for next Monday to just lay out a bit of a process, mm -hmm. so that it can be more clearly understood. Okay. Do you need any further direction tonight on the, on the uh, direction you want to go on this? As far as the... Uh, yeah, you've had some emotion already. Yes. Yeah. Well, like, I, mean, I, yeah. I, I, I can use it now at the time. I'll make a motion that we use the alternative approval process for the lowering my Second. Second. All those in favor? Carried. Anything else, Mr. Fordolowski, in this area that you want me to open up before we board it to the public? Mr. Mayor, no, we have. The staff has enough direction now, and your decision will be ratified in a regular council meeting next Monday. So at this time, uh, we'll entertain questions from the, the public on the 753 discussion we've just had. And we'd like to... I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, the engineer... Uh, I don't know if it's a promotion or, <laughs> or what. Anyway, you made a comment uh, from uh, one of the counselors here about uh, uh, your priorities uh, to uh, install on the uh, proposed, you know, taking over the 753. Uh, you must have in your mind 
ballpark figures as to what these four, I think it was four you suggested, priorities that you want to do first you know, in, in the construction or whatever that is. You must have an idea, ballpark, as to what each one of those might cost. Now, you've been in the business and you've had a look at the whole system here. Uh, um, I think that would be very worthwhile to council to know that because when you go to put these priorities into effect, uh, uh, brand new maybe uh, will cost you, be very costly. Um, if it was used and can be fixed, uh, half of these things might only come in at half cost as to applying for this uh, 1.2 or $3 million. So uh, those would put your, your process maybe cheaper uh, starting out than, uh, than uh, going uh, full bore on it, you know. Yeah, so I mean, the question Mayor, is, yeah. uh, do you have maybe ballpark <coughs> figures to that? We do. So the council has been provided with the figures, and, and just for clarity, uh, the figures, I did not derive the figures, our engineer consultant, true consulting, put together a costing report for the upgrades required. Um, so council does have the figures itemized for each of the upgrades, and um, you know I just simply answer a question of council as to what would be the priorities, and the priority is to provide redundant water supply. Um, that's the top priority. Second priority is sorting out what the <coughs> issue is with the reservoir uh, on the top of that ground, why it will not fill. Well, the reservoir itself is in pretty good shape, though, isn't it? No. Uh, it needs some upgrades. It needs about 650000 worth of upgrades, but structurally, the concrete tank is okay. is worth putting money into. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a comment. I'm, I'm, Go ahead. I'm really totally confused what's going on here. I am really, because I don't understand why when we take over 753 that it has to be a Taj Mahal, but the rest of the community of Silver Creek probably worse shape than 753. It's in older district of Hope. We've got fire hydrants in Hope that are twice as old as 753. I was around and said, but I don't know why we don't take over 753. Take the money that they have, you know, and if there's money owing, once the town owns it, they can add that. People that haven't paid their water, they can add that to the taxes. At least you can collect it. And then do a complete study of the district. So Silver Creek, Hope needs, 753 needs. And then go to a referendum. If it's four million bucks, it's four million bucks. We're all paying, but we're all going to benefit from it. Why would Silver Creek people vote to borrow 1.8 million to fix up 753? That is not going to fly. And another thing that really concerned me is what John Kowalski said. You're going to go out and get 1.8 million dollars and not take it to the people. That's political suicide. You just say you're going to do it. You know, the, the, the people got to go out and. We're all pretty busy. We've got to go out and sign a petition say not to do that. Well, $1.8 million, guys, is a lot of money. And if you're going to just make a motion to spend $1.8 million without asking the citizens, that's... We're right. not doing that, Mr. Gardner. Well, that's what was suggested here. No, no, that's not what okay. we're doing. So, okay. Well, I'm just saying, why don't we do all go together here? Take in 753 the way it is. It's working now. And then look at a total plan for the district of water. And then everybody pays. We are doing that. Pastor Smith wants to respond. So we, we, did, we did complete a master water plan this year, which mm -hmm. tells about the whole area and all the upgrades and everything we need. Right. And part of the one that was 1.8 million was to, to do something for Silver Creek. And we definitely need to do something for Silver Creek. Sure. I mean, and I, I know that water you know, storage tank in there is old and they don't have enough. So that's the idea of getting the 1.8 million. I think the rest of the council to help improve that, like you said, it needs to be that. But we did we did do a master water plan before we that so we can try and get better service for our waters. And sometimes it, it, it wasn't always super expensive. Sometimes just a valve in a certain place will help increase our pressure. So we've done that before, and we want to make sure we do good value for the people of Hope. So. I'd just like to say that it seems like the water controller is still giving a lot of control over this. 
he's the one who's saying he doesn't want to give the water system over to the town of Hope unless he's got certain things in place, like funding or like voting. Um, we don't even know, has anybody approached Mrs. Muka? Has she said she doesn't, she wants to sell it? What is the process? What have you done? Um, uh, while we sit and wait, $150,000 a year is going down the drain because the water controller took it over, but he doesn't do anything. He's got an accounting firm in Corex doing all the work on our money. Uh, it's a lot of money. And like uh, Mr. Gardner says, if you took it over right now, just think of the money you'd be saving. Then we all go together on a water system. We're already hooked up to Hope's water system. There's really nothing to do for you to take it over. It's been done. But the controller has to say to you, I will give you the power to run 753. I don't have any faith in the controller because he blew it from 1987 on by not looking at what was going on. And all the problems that we have could have been prevented, many of them, if the controller had been more aware of what was going on in our area. Unfortunately, it wouldn't. And uh, it's very silly. We have a water uh, hydrant in our front yard. If our house is burning down, apparently they won't use it. How does that make sense? They'll bring water in on a tanker. That's what we've been told. These are the issues that we've been told um, over and over. And it's always the water controller. He has says, oh, it's not me. I have no power. It seems he has all the power because he could give it to Hope tomorrow. If Mrs. Muka doesn't want to keep it and she says, I want Hope to have it, why doesn't the water controller say you can have it? Why is he saying you have to have a vote or you have to have um, money in place? It shouldn't be up to him to say what Hope needs to take it over. It should be up to Hope. And I'm very discouraged with the water controller because he still seems to be running it. Because without the 753 agreement from Ms. Muka, we've got nothing. And what's been done on that? Mr. Mayor, I can tell you that the owner is prepared to sell for good terms. I can tell you that I've roughed out a transfer agreement. However, it still would be subject to endorsement from the water controller's office. Uh, and it has to be modified according to the subjects that reflect your decisions as far as special service area or not, and in this case it's not, and it's a general borrowing clause. So concurrently, I'll be going forward to make sure that timeline is short. Unfortunately, we don't control that. The water controller is operating and overseeing 753. Um, uh, but it will be moved as quickly as possible in, in line with the borrowing activities that Council's direct. And we will be consulting the public. As we stated before, <coughs> any other questions? Let's do it again. Yes, sir. I'm a user of the water, uh, 753. I'm glad the town of Hope is supplying us with water. I don't know why they don't just take it over, upgrade the system. Uh, Gordy Muka, lots of people like him. I think he was a fine man, but he made a lot of mistakes. Uh, he was only charging us $15 a month for water, and we all know that. You know, the handwriting was on the wall. We're now paying $55 a month. Plus they asked for a bunch of money up front because Gordon Muka didn't pay enough, which I find illegal because I've been a businessman all my life. And I can't go to my customers and say, oh, I lost money. Give me some more money for this stuff I sold you down the road. I always paid my water bill. And I don't see how you could justify the water controller or anybody else that made us pay extra money. And as well, like they threaten us if we don't pay that, that they're going to cut our water off. They also threaten us that they will, you know, uh, make our credit bad. So most of us, because we take pride in our paying our bills and that, we don't want a black mark against our names. Yeah. We go and give them the money, and we have done it. There are also other people there saying they're going to charge them well over a thousand dollars just to locate their shutoff valves out front. I think this is ludicrous, you know, like distortion. We're paying for our waters. We're not paying for locating, you know, the shutoff or the supply lines and the rest of it. Yeah. But as far as selling it to the rest of the town, if they did take it over, first of all, you borrow money for a bridge. Now what do you get in return when you do that? You 
take over this water system and right away you've got revenue coming in. And that revenue, I think, should handle most of the debt that would be occurred by upgrading the system. And when you upgrade the system and add it to the rest of the system, it'll also be an asset to the rest of the system because each system out there all hooked together, if one of them fails, you just switch in valves and everybody else is going on. And borrowing money, I mean, I borrowed lots of money as a businessman. And when I thought I needed a million dollars, I went and got a line of credit for a million dollars. And I've only used 600,000. I only paid tax or interest on the 600,000. I don't know, I think you guys should review how you borrow money. Governments maybe are different than they are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and because of it. Again, if you do take over 753 and you do have to borrow the 1.8 million or whatever, I think it should be pointed out to the people that vote for the, it or not for it, how it will benefit the whole system, maybe Silver Creek as well if it's a surplus. Well, thank you for your comments. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm also a 753 water user. Um, for 19 years, I've paid water. We actually pay $73 a month, not 55 And I'm wondering about the people that don't pay. What's, what's council's plan for that? Will they be made to pay what they owe? With interest? Oh, with interest, or will they just be going forward on a clean slate? You want to speak to that, Mr. Uh, I can, Mr. Mayor, if yeah, that's fine. I know that the Water Comptroller is currently now trying to reduce the debts on the book. And right now they're at the lowest level uh, that 753 has ever been for accounts receivable. Uh, the agreement would certainly transfer the debts to the district, and the district could then uh, collect as it would for its normal water system. Uh, I don't believe Council envisions that anyone should get free on board because the water system is transferred from one jurisdiction to another. It's not correct. No. So, um, I certainly won't uh, prepare a, a transfer agreement that would see that for, for council approval. Okay. Councilor Miller, for that, I'd like to ask you a question. Yeah, just clarity on your answer there. I, I'm pretty sure I asked in the previous meeting if the district over, over the system now would we be, have any authority to collect any of the outstanding debts, and we were told no. So, did you just say now that we could have authority to collect outstanding debts? It, I don't believe that I ever said you couldn't collect okay. debts if the system is transferred to us. But if the system is transferred Prior to us, it's one of the things that I've sought legal advice for. And um, it's my intent to provide a transfer agreement, <coughs> reimbursement that would ensure that those debts could be collected. Okay. Um, and in fact, then we could, like we do with our utility. And that could go as far as currently what they're doing now, which is to shut off the water. Again, several people owe significant amount of money. Regardless, uh, it's not fair if people don't pay for their water. I was just under the impression that we had no authority to collect any debt prior to the takeover point that we only could do from that point moving forward. I'm glad to hear that we would have the option for previous debt. Uh, I know that was a concern, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you for your question. Did you get, get the, so you got the answer you're looking for, or you? Well, <laughs> sure. The answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> and it was also brought up uh, that a question was asked before that could the district end up putting it on their title for when they go to sell their home? Right. And that was another option that was discussed as an unpaid any other unpaid tax that we have. And that's how it works. So that's another option as well. Any other questions? I just have one more. Will the water controller not allow you to take over 753 without you spending this $1.8 million? I don't understand that. Mr. Mayor, that's not the case. Uh, staff have brought forward these engineering reports and studies as part of your due diligence for the taxpayer. You need to see the car before you buy the car and know its condition. That's all this exercise is about. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, there was mention of a purchase agreement for purchasing the 753. Is there a dollar amount that the district will be responsible for then? 
Mr. Mayor, that's, uh, that negotiation will remain private, but I can um, inform council that uh, the terms will be very fair. Yeah. Very fair. Yes. After you guys vote on your next meeting on Monday, whether or not what you're going to borrow or what you're not going to borrow, what does the timeline look like? Like, are we looking at five more years? Are we looking at eight months? Are we looking at like how much longer do we have to wait? <coughs> Mr. Mayor, this is part of the information we'll uh, we'll endeavor to get to council as far as the steps required and estimated timelines public consultation, preparation of the bylaw, uh, and that sort of thing. And that, of course, will be in the public record as well. Those will be uh, targets. targets. So can you give us a rough idea what these targets are? I, I can't give <coughs> you that off the top of my head. We're going to have to do some, some staff work to prepare an okay. accurate process with So that with should come out targets. on Monday? Yeah. So we will prepare that for council on Monday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the change will yeah. Just one more question. In the original agreement that 753 had with the comptroller, there were three personal guarantees given. Mm -hmm. They're still valid, I do believe. Has the town looked into those to see if they would pay for all this stuff going on now? I don't know what you're talking about. Do you? Mm -hmm. I can elaborate. Sure. Gordy Muka, well, I was a widow, June, uh, the sister and the realtor down here. At personal guarantees, they had to give when you started that water system. And I think the personal guarantees would go against the extra costs that the work people are having to pay. And I don't, I don't think we should just let that slide with the purchase agreement. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, it is a transfer agreement, not a purchase agreement, but there has to be some exchange of value. It could be as low as a dollar, but it will be favorable. Right. Uh, I'm not certain, but I will uh, certainly ask a question. But I believe the, the issue is a personal guarantee or not, if they're in a position to actually provide. A personal guarantee, unfortunately, is like something that if you can't at the end of the day provide it, there's, you can't get blood out of a stone. But this is something I'll research. And I'll have, I'll have answers for you. have that by Monday as well? I will. All right, thank you, Mr. Corral. I'll be in the comptroller's records. And you may not like that, but it's there. Why wouldn't you like it? Because then he has to work. No. <laughs> <laughs> we all think the same yeah. of him. <laughs> Any other questions? We've well, got the opportunity. Yeah, is, uh, is uh, 753 still a company? Are they still a valid company? Are, are they are they bankrupt? Are they that? They're being uh, operated under a receivership framework. So basically, that the water controller is taking them over okay. for operation. So as an entity, they still exist. Hence, the transfer agreement has to be between seven five three in the district and not seven five three in the water controller. Okay. Now, can you go after them for money, like June? Uh, uh, like she owns a house. This this is the issue. Uh, yeah. I'll do some research on, but if there's no blood in that stone, we may not be able to get anything. Yeah, because we're stuck with everything. Potentially, but yeah. this is part of the due diligence process we're going through, Mr. Mayor. We're trying to take this over as quickly as possible and as clean as possible. Mrs. Muka wants out. We want it. The controller wants out. The time is right for everyone to come together and make this happen. Mm -hmm. so this is the steps we have to do to make it happen. What, one more? Yes. I, I can't recall when the other meeting was that I was here, maybe in August. You guys voted, you said you would take it over, and now we're in December. And it feels like not a lot has happened. We're still, we were paying $55 a month, now we're paying $73 a month. What's to say in the next month or two weeks they're going to start charging us $100 a month? You know, like, uh, really, we need to, we really need to see a timeline, like, of when this will happen. I understand Monday you have a meeting. We will have a timeline down pretty well, I would think, by Monday. It's a 90-day window, 60-day window, based on what we have to do to notify the public, have the public meeting, and put everything through. 
and then John can do the next steps. This Mr. Is more and Mr. Mayor, uh, I did inform the Water Controller of the previous decision of Council to take over the system. I will inform them of the Committee of Holds recommendations tonight, and it would clearly be imprudent of them to change the, the rate tariff uh, as they know that Council is moving to acquire the system. So I highly doubt it. Clearly we can't control it, but I, I think it's unlikely. I too am a pair on the 753 water system. You think it's unlikely that they'll raise our rate? Or yes, you think very it's unlikely that okay. they'll raise our rate. All right. Councillor Smith? So the 753 Waterworks has been going for 30 years of pain and suffering out there. Because back in the 80s, people used to wake up in the morning and never had water in them. It That's wasn't even in the started. 80s, Victor. I've only lived there for 10 years, and I ran out of water my first two years that I lived there. That's eight years ago. Yeah. It hasn't been not back in 30 years. That's eight years ago. But it's been a problem ongoing. Yeah. And in the 90s, they approached 753, the council, the time to take over. And they wouldn't let them take, you know, they didn't want to sell to the council. So they tried that back at night in, uh, was it 2003 and 4, uh, Mr. Muka phoned the council in time and said take it over. And the council said to look at it, but we need the engineer drawings were certified and everything. And they said, well, they didn't have it and they didn't want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So this has come before councils for a long time. Yes. So I'm this, we, we we're actually going to deal with it this time Thank to you. solve it. But it's unfortunate it wasn't handled earlier. Mm -hmm. It's not for lack of trying for mayors and councils along the way. I agree. We're close. We're very close. All right. If there's another question, so I have one more question. If this All right. Speaking too much of it. Is it the intent of council not to take over 753 until the referendum or how you're going to get to 1.8 million? Or are you going to take it over for these people? I don't understand this. So it means it could be in every year to go by if you want to wait till the money is available. You know, so I, I just don't understand this. We need to take over this system. We need to look after these people. And we as a whole community need to pay for it. But it has to be favorable for the rest of us who live in, not in 753. So the Creek needs some upgrading. Town of Hope needs some upgrading. Town of Hope got wooden mains still from 100 years ago. I mean, you know, this is all. So why don't we just take it over? Can, can you not do that? Uh, Mr. Fortalowski, can you not just take it over without, like I think, if you're going to wait for a referendum or whatever to get 1.8 million, we're looking at it every year. Why can't you know. just Mr. Mayor, uh, it is a political decision, uh, but it is a risk management exercise for you for, uh, as council. So if you wish, as uh, Mr. Gardner says, to just take it on and uh, potentially go to a referendum or, or alternate assent process and apply for grants, um, that can be done. The risk is yours. We're just presenting you the information as far as the cost and the asset manager and the work that has to be done now and the scope of work that has to be done to avoid our current system being put at risk if 753 stays the same. Short break, uh, about five minute break, and then we'll move on to the next topic. Thank you, everyone.